Welcome back to another Tutorial Tuesday. Today we're heading to the land of cheese and windmills. We're taking a look at Zandvoort, where the wind is ever blowing sand in your face. This track has been heavily reworked and now has some steep indie car like banking, which makes for exciting and speedy racing that you can't find anywhere else. We're gonna give you some tips on how to master the track in our track guide, but be sure to stick around till the end as we're gonna dive a little deeper into setups and analyze the perfect racing line. If you want to analyze your own driving, use our recommended setups and get faster for free for a month. Sign up on tracktitan.io and use referral code TUTORIALZAND and be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss any of our future uploads. Starting the lap here at Zandvoort, we approach the Tarzanbocht. Hit the brakes a little bit before the 50 meter board, making sure to use the full width of the track. At the apex of turn one, we want to use third gear. We stay tight to the inside line, but keep your tires off the curb, as this could send you into a spin before we have even completed one corner. Coming out of T1, short shift up and get on the power early. Use a little bit of entry curb on the left as you follow the track's edge to the left just before turn-in. At the 50 meter board, flick the car in slightly late for the best line. Aim to get as close to the apex curb as possible without getting onto it. You can run quite deep into turn 3 as the banking will keep your minimum speed up. Use third gear and focus on getting a good exit onto the straight. For turn 4, our only focus is to shorten the distance we travel whilst making as little steering inputs as we can. The same goes for turn 5. The outside line is your friend here, but the curb is not. So aim to just miss it if you want to stay alive. We clip the inside curb and make our way over to the left under the crypto.com sign to set ourselves up for the best entry into turn 7. Turn in at the orange marking on the left hand safety barrier. Lift and downshift the 6th gear, wait for a fraction of a second and then get back on the power. Avoid the inside curb and don't run too much onto the exit curb or it will make the next corner more difficult. Dab on the brakes after the 100 meter mark and turn in just before the 50 meter board. You can take a little bit of apex curb here but try to avoid going too far onto it as you want to have a wide line out of here. Try not to use any of this outside curbing as it can suck your car off the track. Break between the 150 meter board and start turning in at the 50 meter board. Trail brake towards the apex and shift down the third gear to brush past the apex curve. Use all of the track space here, try to avoid any wheel spin and get back over to the right hand side for turn 10. Break around the 50 meter board deep into the corner and make a late apex in third gear so you get a better exit. You can use a little apex curbing here, but it can be risky depending on your setup. Short shift out of the corner and avoid using too much exit curb. Use a straight to get back to the left hand side for T11. Brake on the 100 meter mark, shift down the second gear and take the inside curb. Stick to the inside of turn 12, but avoid the curbing as it might send you into a spin. Use second gear during the middle of the corner, but then short shift on exit to improve traction. Now get back over to the left again to set yourself up for a wide angle into turn 13. Dab the brakes and shift down the fifth around the 50 meter board. Rotate the car and get back on the power as soon as possible. Brush past the inside curb again, run onto the exit curb to carry the maximum amount of speed into the banking and the main straight to follow. Try to minimize scrubbing off speed and stick to the inside until the banking gets less steep. Stick to the left side of the track all the way to the Tarzanbocht if you're in a race. In case of hot lapping or qualifying, you want to stick to the right all the way to the line to reduce the distance and optimize your lap times. Now let's analyze Sandford a little deeper. First of all, this circuit has quite a few bands in which downforce is very helpful. You're not spending too much time on the straights, which is why high downforce setups work very well. When we analyze segment 11, the last corner and the main straight, we see that the standard setup with less downforce, shown in orange, is slowly gaining more speed over the more downforce heavy setup, which is shown in blue. But when we look at the next corner, a different story is told. The blue driver with more downforce can break later and can get back on the throttle earlier as well, as he has more grip throughout the Tarzan ball. 
When you sign up for free for a month of Track Titan, when you use referral code TutorialZend, you can check out our recommended setups right here, which will help you to gain that last little advantage you might need. The high banking on some corners is also one of the unique aspects of Sandford. In real life we see the drivers use this banking as a slingshot. They get high up on the banking so they can exit the corner with tremendous speeds. In the game it works a little bit differently. The widest line is not necessarily the fastest. When we take a look at this track titan analysis, we see that the optimal racing line is pretty much in the center of the track throughout turn 3. And by getting back on the throttle gradually, you can build up speed throughout this whole corner and exit in a stable manner. Now let's round out the video by going over the key points once more. Zandvoort has quite a few hills and bends, which is why a higher downforce setup is recommended to perform well. Most apex curbs can be used, but they are often risky if you get too far up on them. Try not to use too many exit curbs as they will unsettle your car. And by learning the right racing lines, you won't have to use them too often. And lastly, the in-game racing lines are somewhat different from how the real drivers go around the track. Physics in the real world work a little bit differently than in the game. So don't depend on them to teach you how to drive Zandvoort as fast as possible. We hope you've learned something today. Let us know in the comments down below if you have any tips of your own. And we hope to see you in the next video.